It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Mogansan, China. I don't have a tripod, so bear with the shaky camera. Whoa! Anyway, we have a question from our friend Tim. Two questions. First of all, he wants to know if doing push-ups on your knuckles has any specific benefits. And yes, number one, doing push-ups on the knuckles will strengthen your wrist. That may shock and surprise you because you might think, well, the knuckles are the connecting point to the floor, aren't they? Yeah, but what are you strengthening the most? The wrist, your bone alignment between the metacarpals of the hand and these little bones at the bottom of the palm and the wrist, of course. A lot of people, my wife, for example, has a ganglion cyst in her wrist and she cannot do standard push-ups with a bent wrist. It's just simply too painful. So she has to do knuckle push-ups. Why? Because it keeps the pressure off of the wrist, keeps it from bending, and keeps the bones aligned very nicely like that. So as far as athletic transfer to sports like, say, boxing or MMA or any punching art, yeah, you want to keep your wrist straight and punching, and doing knuckle push-ups will also straighten that. Additionally, knuckle push-ups can give you a neutral position of the hand and the wrist on the floor, specifically doing push-ups as opposed to the hand like this. Now we've got a hand like this in a neutral parallel position. And if doing regular push-ups gives you any issue with the shoulder, doing a knuckle push-up can take that pressure off of the shoulder. It's very similar to the difference between doing a bench press with a barbell and doing a bench press with a Swiss bar or a football bar. I don't know if you've seen one of those. It's one of those kind of odd looking rectangular bars with the uh, multiple grips in the middle that you can hold at various widths. And if you are suffering from shoulder impingements or shoulder injuries of some type, lifting with a Swiss bar or a football bar or whatever you want to call it can help you out a lot with your bench press as an assistive exercise. And the knuckle push-up has essentially the same bone alignment as the Swiss bar. So give that a try. The next question Tim asked was about roundhouse kicks with the ball of the foot. You know, this part. There we go. I'm at a hotel right now in Mogonshan. So that's why we got this funky backdrop here. So he wants to know, is it common to teach roundhouse kicks with the ball of the foot instead of with the shin or the instep? It's not uncommon to learn this in traditional martial arts. I was taught it in both Taekwondo, Shotokan Karate, and also Kyokushin. I studied a lot of different traditional martial arts and it's fairly common to teach it. What's not common is to do it in actual fights and competition unless you're wearing shoes. Now, there's probably like three guys in the comment section who are saying, oh, I totally do in-step roundhouse kicks all the time. Well, maybe you do on the heavy bag a lot, but if you're actually doing that in professional fights, please send me the footage. I would like to see it. It's a very high risk, but high reward technique. And here's why. If you muck it up, you're gonna injure your foot. But if you land it, especially to the body, you are transferring a tremendous amount of weight and power into a small bony protrusion of the foot, which can do a significant amount of damage to your opponent's body. That's not something I would throw to the head, but definitely to the body, as long as you can set it up well enough to avoid your opponent blocking it with their elbows. Now, if you're wearing shoes, on the other hand, this is a whole different issue. If you're wearing shoes, that would make a roundhouse kick with the ball of the foot go from being a oddity to being a much, much higher percentage technique, especially if you have a fairly stiff soled shoe where you can still curl your toes back and out of the way. Now, if you have some mobility issues in your foot, for example, if you can't pull your toes back, you're gonna have a problem with this technique. So stick to other kicking techniques. But if you can easily pull your toes back and articulate your feet pretty well, you might want to give it a try. Test it out on a heavy bag first before you try it against a real person. We have a question from WWE Metal Fan today who wants to know what's the big deal with personal training? Is it worth it? 
Is it something that the average Joe can get something out of? Because he knows a lot of professional athletes and movie stars do personal training. But what is the deal with personal training for normal people? How do you get the most out of a personal training session? Okay, I've spent many years working as a personal trainer, among other things, and I'll tell you how to get the most out of personal training. The average person can, and definitely should, do some private training with a martial arts coach if it is an option. And I would strongly recommend most people do group classes and private training sessions because you're going to benefit differently from both of those experiences. With group training, for example, you're going to have a lot of different training partners to work with, a lot of different experiences to draw on. Whereas if you only work with a coach one-on-one, -on -one, you're only going to have one body, one set of experiences, one set of strengths and weaknesses to work against, and that's not going to benefit you the same way. Now you're going to have a depth of experience to draw on from that coach, but that's a different thing. To get the most out of training, go into that training session with questions and with goals. Something I've seen that holds a lot of people back is that they go into a personal training session with this idea, I'm just gonna throw some money at this coach and he's gonna throw some skill right back at me and I'm going to purchase happiness. I'm going to purchase weight loss. I'm going to purchase all my hopes and dreams. I'm going to purchase skills. And it doesn't work that way. Go into the training session with questions. Ask your coach specifically questions that you are struggling with. And if you don't have any questions, you're doing something wrong. If you don't have any questions, maybe hold off a bit on spending that extra cash on that personal training session until you have some. Let's say you're taking a jujitsu class, right? And you really want to make a certain guard pass work. Like maybe you're working on your over under guard pass and it's just not happening. And everybody is catching you in a triangle choke while you're trying. But it seems like that's a pretty valuable guard pass to have in your arsenal. So you go to your coach and you say, hey coach, I would like a personal training session on fixing my over-under guard pass. Can you help me out with that? Okay, now we're talking. Now we have a goal. Now that coach knows exactly how to help you. He knows exactly how to answer your question. But if you go in there with a very vague goal and a very vague question like, hey, coach, make my jujitsu better. Now we can spend the whole hour just trying to assess what's wrong with your jujitsu. And the answer is probably everything. Or we can go in with a very specific question. Hey, I'm having trouble making this guard pass work. I don't know why. Can you take a look at it and help me fix it? And then guess what happens? We address that specific problem and then you get good at guard passing, at least with that one specific thing, right? And then you keep training and then you run into another trouble spot. And so you go back with more questions. So. Always have goals, always have questions, and whenever possible, do both group training sessions and private training sessions once in a while for the most bang for your buck. If you have um, questions for the next Q&A with the coach, please leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train. Do you ever have trouble landing your jab? Sure. We all do. So what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what. You get yourself a rash guard with a camouflage left sleeve so he will never see it coming. My left hand is now virtually invisible. Can't see that, can you, Shell? No, where's the left hand? I know, right? Camouflage sleeves from xmarshall.com. Go check them out. They'll never see you coming.